Oh, Dad, I mean, bourbon was his life. I mean, Mom always said I was his second child. The first child was the distillery, and I was his second child because, you know, when I was a little boy growing up, if there was any problem at the distillery, my father jumped in the car and drove down there. It didn't matter if a valve broke, if a pump went out. He wanted to make sure that he was right there seeing what was going on. And he wanted to make the world's finest bourbon, and he did for years and years and years. And it was his life. He went on the road to promote it. And when he got to be 70 years old, he was tired of traveling. I mean, I think he would have still done it if they could have gotten him from point A to point B, kind of like Star Trek with a transporter and not had to go through airports and take off his shoes and go through the x-ray machines. He would have traveled until the day he died. But all the stuff in the airports and the traveling and the airline seats didn't fit him. He was a big guy. He finally hung it up and put me out there on the road, but he still entertained at the house almost up until he passed away. And It was his life. I mean, Dad loved making bourbon, enjoyed tasting bourbon with people around the world and promoting it. He promoted the whole bourbon industry, not just the bean products. We have two distilleries here at Jim Beam, one here at Claremont, <coughs> excuse me, and another one over in Boston, Kentucky, the Booker No plant, we call it today. And Dad was at that other plant, and he could kind of do things. Nobody knew what was going on. So he started making small batches of bourbon his way, putting the barrels in certain sweet spots in the aging rock houses, and sampling. And then fooling with it, and he developed this product. Well, one of our vice presidents from our corporate headquarters in Chicago came down and asked Dad, he said, well, we'd like for you to start looking at to make a premium bourbon, super premium style bourbon. And his quote was, if you all came out of the house of knowledge in Chicago a little more and down here to Kentucky where the work's being done, you'd know that I already had it made. And he said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, come on, we're going to get in my truck. Took him up to one of the aging rock houses. They took the bung out of the barrel, dropped in the thief, pulled out some whiskey out of the barrel, sampled it and said, now this is how we're going to sell this bourbon, right out of the barrel. And that's how Booker's bourbon was made. Dad did it all on his own. He let, during the development, he would let friends and family sample some of what he was making up at holiday seasons, he'd bring it out at Christmas time and let my uncles and aunts and all of the kinfolk of age and all his friends that came by the house during the holidays get a little taste of it. And he would watch their emotions to see if their eyes lit up or if they grimaced. And that's how he worked on his Booker's Bourbon. And in 1987, we bottled up a few cases of it and was given to our distributor friends around the country to see if there was a market for $50 bottles of bourbon at that time. And that kind of, as they say, the rest is history. Uh, the small batch bourbon category was uh, launched 20, now to be right at 25 years ago. And dad kind of started the whole super premium industry of our of bourbon industry you know his buddy Elmer T. Lee was doing Blanton's up at Frankfurt about that same time frame so I guess Elmer and Booker were the guys that really brought super premium bourbon to the world you know, and so that was kind of dad's baby and it bore his name so that was kind of cool to see a bourbon with his name on it he hand wrote the first labels uh, it was a it was a heck of a project, and it was really cool. And he went on the road to promote it, too, so it was good. Well, there's been a lot of Beams work at other distilleries. I mean, you go right down the road to Heaven Hill. You know, Parker and Craig Beam are the master distillers there today. But if you go back, Jim Beam's brother, Park, he went to work at Heaven Hill, and his family lineage, which that's Parker and Craig's grandfather and great-grandfather, that's, you know, was the Beam family. Elmo Beam was the first master distiller at Maker's Mark. So, I mean, there were several beams from going back to old Jacob. You look at the family trees spread out all through the bourbon industry. 
And I remember hearing a story when I was a kid that an old timer said if it wasn't a bean making your whiskey at the distillery, the whiskey couldn't be any good because all the good distilleries had beams making the whiskey. So.